Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we're looking at a data set of Kickstarter campaigns and trying to uh, predict whether a given campaign will be successful or not using a neural network. And uh, you can see we have a good number of features here, uh, 15 columns in total. And if I go to our notebook, I have the task for today, which is given data about various Kickstarter campaigns, let's try to classify whether a given campaign will be successful or not. And here I have some imports, NumPy and Pandas, as usual. And for uh, pre-processing, I have the standard scalar and train test split function from sklearn. And I also have this class weight uh, that comes from sklearn.utils, which we will use to assign class weights to the classes before training. And I uh, will use TensorFlow to train our network. So I'll import those and we'll load in the data using pandas.readcsv. Let me get the file over here. There's actually two CSVs. I'm going to be using the 2018 one. Uh, so we'll load that in and um, take a look at it. All right, so we have 15 columns in total. And we can see, uh, well, let's, let's take some information. All right, so it looks like we may have some null values. Not too many, though. Looks pretty good. And we have a large number of object columns. So we're going to need to do some encoding. Uh, so first thing to do is, uh, all right, let's, let's do this. Uh, cleaning and pre-processing. All right, so let's let's figure out um, which columns do we not need right off the bat. And I think these two are not going to help us uh, predict whether a campaign will be successful or not. Now, I'm sure the name probably carries some form of um, information about the success of a campaign, but it's not. It would be difficult to uh, turn this into a useful feature. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying for our for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to use it. So we're going to drop ID and name. So I'm going to call that unneeded columns. ID and name. And we'll say data.drop unneeded columns. Access one. All right. Uh, I'm going to keep the data down here so we can keep looking at it and we'll process it above. So what do we need to do next? Uh, let's figure out how many uh, missing values do we have. So we're going to sum across the is a name matrix to get the total number in each column. And it looks like we only have one column with missing values and that happens to be a numerical column, which uh, just our luck is very easy to fix. What we can do is say Okay, USD pledge, just the name of the column. If we take the mean of that, you can see it has a mean uh, that's taken from all the non-missing values. And what we can do uh, is fill in the missing values with the mean. So dot fill NA with the mean. So all I'll do is just set the column equal to that. And now, if we look at this again, we have no more missing values. So I'll leave this here in the notebook. If we sum across the rows and then again across the columns, we get the total number of missing values, zero. All right, so now what do we have? Okay, I noticed something else, which is that in, the, in what we're trying to predict, we have more than just successful and failed. So let's take a look at the unique values in that column, which is state. This is what we're trying to predict, state. So dot unique. And you can see we have failed, canceled, successful, live, undefined, and suspended. So what I want to do is I want to see how many examples are something other than failed or successful. So I can use a query for this, data.query. And I'm going to um, check, OK, I'm going to query the data set for any column, any, time, any uh, rows in which state does not equal failed and state does not equal successful. 
and we have a total of uh, 46,986 rows. Now this may seem like a lot to drop, but because we have uh, 378,000 in our total data set, uh, we will still probably be able to have uh, good training uh, with the remaining data after we drop this, these 47,000 rows. So there might be some other things we can do. We could maybe uh, change cancel and suspend it into failed, but uh, we're just going to drop them. So what I can do is get dot index on that, and this will just be the indices, which I can then use to drop. So I'm dropping from axis zero this time. And anytime we drop rows, we want to reset the index, uh, unless of course you need a, you need the index to be uh, to identify them. In our case, we don't, so we'll reset it and we'll set drop equals true to prevent us from adding the old index uh, in indices on as a new column. So that's going to be our new data, oh, and I should put this down here. All right, so now, okay, this should just be so data substate dot unique. Good. Now we just have failed and successful. So now we can predict whether a given uh, campaign is failed or successful based on these features. All right, so I'm now going to start, also I'll call it a feature engineering and encoding. So what I'm going to do, now that we've cleaned up the data a little, uh, I'm going to try to turn these date columns into uh, new features. And I'm going to try to uh, encode the remaining categorical features so that everything is numerical. We can feed it right into our model. So let's deal with the days first. Um, I noticed that, for example, in this deadline column, uh, the first four characters of every row is a year, and the fifth and uh, the sixth and seventh characters, uh, four or five, yeah, sixth and seventh characters are the month. And those are two useful features, I believe. Uh, what time of year was it, and how recent was it, essentially. So data sub deadline year. Uh, well, let me start this way. Data sub deadline dot apply a lambda function that takes in some x, which will be a given date, and it's going to spit back. Sp it's going to spit back spit back x from zero to four. So that will just be the first four characters of it. And if I run that, you'll see it's all the years from deadline. So what I'm going to do is make this new column deadline year and just make it that. All right, and um, I actually, this is still going to be a string. So I'm going to do numpy.float and this could be an int, but I'm just going to do float uh, of that thing. So it'll be floats when we're done. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing except for the month and this is going to be indexed from 5 to 7. So it will be, uh, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we start from there, 5, 6, uh, 6, 7. We'll just get the month. All right, then I'll do the same thing, but for this other date column called launched. You can see that format is still the same. The first four are the year and the sixth and seventh are the uh, month. So if I change this from deadline, here I'll just select all these instances of deadline. And I'm going to change it to launched, which is the name of this column. All right, now we should have four new features that are taken from these two uh, old columns. Um, so because they're no longer needed, we're going to drop them. So deadline and launched. And dropping them from access one. All right. Uh, so we should put data here again. And you can see we now have deadline year, deadline month, launched year, and launched month. And we no longer have those original dates. So these are actually usable features, whereas the date is a little harder to do. Um, another way to do this maybe would have been to sort them in some way and then encode them as like ordinal encoding. But I find that this, this has a great success, good success. Um, 
year and month are really all the most important information you need in most situations. Like the, uh, you could use the day, which we definitely have, but like how useful is time of month, you know? It's like seasonality is more important than, uh, pe people don't really think at the beginning of the month to the end of the month. They think the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So that may have more of an effect than the day. Although we could include it and in, uh, definitely a possibility. All right, so what's next? Uh, let's deal with the state column. So we know it has two values, failed and successful, but let's turn it into zero and one. So data sub state dot apply, a lambda function that takes in some x, which will be either failed or successful. And it's going to return one if x equals successful, and otherwise it'll return zero. So this will become one, this, I mean, this will be zero, 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 and then one, and the rest will be zeros here. You can see that here, that's the column with these, uh, this uh, binary encoding we're doing. And so this, we're gonna rewrite the column to be like that. All right. So, um, okay, so we now have numerical data in everything except uh, here and here. So there's four columns remaining. Uh, and let's take a look at what kind of data is in them. So let me do it up here. I'll make a dictionary. It's going to map a column to a list of uh, the unique values in that column. And that's for every column in data.columns if data.dtypes sub column equals object. So what this is saying is uh, find all the, the columns uh, that are non-numeric and return a dictionary of the column name mapped to the unique values in that column. You can see we have category is mapped to all the unique values in category and so on. So we're trying to look at like uh, so there's quite a few unique values in category. Main category has fewer values. So I guess we can think of category as like a subcategory of main category. And then currency has a, a good number, not too many. Country also a good number, not too many. So what we know about this is they are all nominal variables, which means we can use one hot encoding to encode them. So I'm gonna make a, a function, one hot encode, uh, it's going to take in a data frame, a list of columns, and a list of prefixes to attach to the dummy variables, uh, the dummy columns. So uh, let's start by making a copy of the data frame. And then we're going to iterate through each column that we specify. So for column in columns, uh, we're going to create a dummies matrix, uh, pandas.getDummies, of df sub column and we're going to give it a prefix. So, uh, dummy, get dummies, basically. Okay, let's make this data, and let's get a column here. So, currency. Let's see what it does for currency. And I'm going to give it a prefix of C-U-R-R. -R. You can see it's going to take every unique value that was originally in currency. So, uh, USD, uh, what else we got? GPB, uh, GBP here. Um, and it's going to give us a one for the example uh, that ha the original value was, was stored. So what I mean is for here we had um, GBP, one through four was USD. So over here we have one for G GBP and uh, ones for, zero th for one through four for USD. And everything else has zeros. So uh, with these dummies, uh, we're going to store it in dummies. And you can see the prefix is what we specified. It appends it to the beginning with an underscore. Uh, we're then going to concatenate. So I'm going to call this new data. The data frame is now going to be a concatenation of the old data frame and the dummies. And uh, we're at concatenating them side by side. So we say access one. So we're gonna stick all these dummies onto the end of the data frame, essentially. And then when we're done, we're gonna drop the original column. 
that we created the dummies from, because it's no longer needed. And then we can return the data frame when we're all done. So there's our function. And I'm going to say data equals one hot encode, passing in data. And now we need a list of columns to encode. And you can see the uh, categorical columns are category, main category, main category, currency, and country. And then we need a list of prefixes. So how about a uh, cat, main cat, cur, and country. All right. Now, if, oh, what happened? Prefix is not defined. Oh, yes, yes. OK, so I'm only iterating through columns right now. I want to iterate through columns and prefixes at the same time. So I want something like this, column prefix in columns uh, and prefixes. So what we can do is zip columns and prefixes together. That will return tuples of the element-wise pairings of columns and prefixes, and then we can iterate through them properly. So uh, now we look at data. Aha, we can see we have 220 columns now, and all these one-hot columns at the end, and the original categorical columns are gone. So, our data is fully numeric. We're ready to split and scale the data. So I'll write that here, splitting and scaling. And we're going to scale, well first let's split into x and y. Okay, so y is what we're trying to predict. And this is going to be uh, just the state column. And x is going to be everything except the state column what we'll use to predict it. So we're dropping it. All right, and then we will scale x. So x, we don't want to scale the, what we're trying to predict, right? But everything else we want to scale. So I'm going to make this scalar. It's going to be a standard scalar object from sklearn. And we're going to scale x using it. So scalar.fit transform x. All right. Now, if we look at x, when that's done, you can see it's now they all each column takes on uh, values from between. Well, sorry, each column now has mean of zero and a variance of one. So, if we want to see that as a data frame, it will look like this: uh, all the columns have been centered at zero and have univariance. All right, and now we can split again, this time into train and test sets. So x train x test y train y test equals train test split x y and we'll give it a train size of 70 percent and we'll give it a random state so that we because this uh, function also shuffles the data and it splits it randomly so we give a random state to reproduce the results so how about 34 and then uh, we are ready to model and train. All right, so let's see, what's the shape of our inputs? We have 221 columns to predict with. And let's also see how skewed are our classes. So this is, since y is just zeros and ones, we can use mean on it to get the percentage of ones uh, in, the, in y. And so we have 40% positive and 60% negative. So um, I'm going to use this thing that um, it's basically, all right, it's from sklearn. I imported it. Uh, it's called class weight. And class weight allows us to generate weights for all the uh, imbalanced classes. Uh, so we use class weight dot compute to uh, compute the class weights for a series of classes. So first what I want to do is specify the mode, which is balanced, which means we want them uh, to, each, to all have the same value, in this case 50-50. And why train? This is We're just doing it on the training set, right? Because uh, we want to train on train with these class weights. Dot unique. So if we look at this, 
ytrain.unique is just a zero and a one. Okay. Um, and we pass in ytrain as well. So what this is saying now, it's going to compute class class weights on ytrain for the classes in ytrain.unique and with the mode of balanced. And let's call that class weights. All right, and then when we're done, we're just gonna turn it into a dictionary. Well, let me show you. Uh, if we compute this, no, oh, what happened? It shouldn't be compute, sorry. Compute class weights. Class weight, sorry. All right, so if we look at class weights now, you can see it's a, it's a, an array as it is. So we want it as a dictionary. TensorFlow takes in a dictionary. So class weights equals dict of enumerate class weights. All right, and now you can see uh, zero has been mapped to this weight and one has been mapped to this weight. So we have a weight for a given class now. And this can be fed right into TensorFlow. So let's uh, start making our model. So I'm gonna make an input layer, tf.keras.input. And we, the shape is gonna be the number of features we have, which is 221. And then I'm gonna have two hidden layers, uh, dense layers with 64 activations and a ReLU activation function. So we're passing an inputs to this one and X into this one. And then our output layer is only gonna have one activation that will represent the probability uh, estimate of the positive class. So the activation here will be sigmoid because we want probability estimates between zero and one. We, come in, we bring in an X and now we can create our model. tf.keras.model, inputs and outputs. Okay, let's compile the model. So for our optimization function, we'll use Atom. For loss, we'll use binary cross entropy. And for metrics, let's use two metrics, um, accuracy, and we'll use uh, the AUC, area under the receiver operating characteristic curve. All right, we'll specify a batch size and number of epochs. And I'm gonna train for a large number of epochs because I'm gonna use the early stopping callback. And um, so history equals model.fit. So I'm gonna store it in the history object, the uh, history of our fit. I'm gonna train it on X train and Y train, give it a validation split of 20%. Uh, we're going to patch in the batch size, pass in the batch size, and the number of epochs, and then I'm going to add a few things. So first, we're going to add the class weights. So class weight equals class weights, what we computed earlier, and this will assign weights to the two classes so that the loss function uh, cares more about penalizing. Um, The, like this class. No, no, which is the class that's in, imbalanced, right? So because there's fewer examples in uh, the negative class, wait, no, 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 there's more examples in the negative class. So it's it's not gonna, it's going, the loss function is going to adjust for that so that we can try to get a better, accu a better performance on the model based on uh, the weights. So, we're also going to include a callback function. And it's gonna be tf.keras.callbacks.earlystopping. This is a great callback that allows us to essentially monitor a metric or loss function, loss value. So let's do validation loss. It's important that we use validation. And it, what it's gonna do is gonna monitor this as it trains and if it notices that this stops improving at any point, we'll specify a patience, which will be how many epochs uh, will we have to wait before we 
um, agree that it has stopped improving. So if it is no longer improving for three epochs in a row, we're going to stop the training and restore the best weights from our training. All right, so uh, that's basically going to um, it won't matter how long we train for, as long as it's sufficiently long. It'll once the validation law starts to go back up, it's going to stop it and return the, to the best weights that we had. And this will prevent overfitting. I mean, overfitting from uh, training for too long. So verbose equals one, so we can see when it stops. And I guess let's train. And we have a problem. I misspelled it probably. Yeah, binary. 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 Okay, let's train. There we go. It's training. And results. Let's evaluate the model on the test set. No, X test, Y test. All right, and I will uh, pause the video and come back when it's done training. All right, we're back, and as you can see, it stopped after epoch 20 because we had um, our validation loss continue to go up for three epochs. Um, so now it has returned the to the best weight, um, which was, I believe, uh, somewhere around here. I don't know. It found the best the best weights, uh, which had the best performance, and reverted to those. And you can see we have pretty good accuracy. We're just going to see what we got from our test set. And that looks very promising. So we have an accuracy of 94% and an AUC of 0.98. So a very well performing model. And it's interesting that we we're able to get such high accuracy based on uh, just these features. I mean, I suppose that the uh, amount of money that was raised, right, that was in here, right? Yeah, well, maybe it looks, I mean, there is a good number, a good amount of information here. But uh, it's interesting that, that we got such high, high accuracy. All right, but I, I think that, uh, that concludes today's episode. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.